Hello and welcome to my channel and welcome to this week's Wednesday interlude in which I discuss my reading progress and in which I turn the spotlight on Jacques Casanova as a writer. Before we turn to Casanova I can confirm that I read another six short stories in Conan Doyle's collection called Tales of Pirates and Blue Water. I read the six stories in Tales of Blue Water. I'll include my evaluation of these stories in my May wrap-up video in my forthcoming Sunday morning meetup, so I won't say anything more about them here. But you can see my evaluation of the six pirate stories which I included in my spotlight on Sir Winston Churchill at the end of this video. Now let's turn the spotlight on Jacques Casanova as a writer. Jacques Casanova was born in Venice on the 2nd of April 1725. The name Casanova has come to mean a man who is a promiscuous and unscrupulous lover, but there is far more to Casanova the man than this description would imply. Early on Casanova did, demonstrated a quick wit and intense appetite for knowledge and a perpetually inquisitive mind. He entered the University of Padua at the age of 12 and graduated at 17 in 1742 with a degree in law for which, he wrote, I felt an unconquerable aversion. His guardian's hope was that he would become an ecclesiastical lawyer. Casanova had also studied moral philosophy, chemistry and mathematics and was keenly interested in medicine. I should have been allowed to do as I wished, he wrote, and become a physician. While attending the university, Casanova began to gamble and quickly got into debt, causing his recall to Venice by his grandmother, but the gambling habit had become firmly established. Casanova made and lost several fortunes throughout his life through gambling. Casanova was recognised by his contemporaries as an extraordinary person, a man of far-ranging intellect and curiosity. He was, by vocation and inclination, a lawyer, a clergyman, a military officer, a violinist, a conman, a pimp, a gourmand, a dancer, a, a businessman, a diplomat, a spy, a politician, a medic, a mathematician, a social philosopher, a cabalist, a playwright and a writer. Casanova wrote 42 books, along with plays, philosophical and mathematical treatises, opera libretti, poetry, and works on calendars, canon law, and cubic geometry, and many letters. He translated Homer's Iliad into modern Italian, helped introduce the oratorio into French music, and wrote a five-volume science fiction novel. Casanova has also been recognised by posterity as one of the foremost chroniclers of his age, and this is reflected in his memoirs. He was a true adventurer, travelling across Europe from end to end in search of fortune, seeking out the most prominent people of his time to further his objectives. He associated with European royalty, popes and cardinals, along with luminaries such as Voltaire, Goethe and Mozart. In regard to Mozart, Casanova contributed to the libretto of Mozart's opera Don Giovanni. Born of actors, he had a passion for the theatre and for an improvised theatrical life. But with all his talents, he frequently succumbed to the quest for pleasure and sex, often avoiding sustained work and established plans, and got himself into trouble when prudent action would have been more to his advantage. His true occupation was living largely on his quick wits, steely nerves, luck, social charm and the money given to him in gratitude or obtained by trickery. Prince Charles de Lene, who understood Casanova well and who knew most of the prominent individuals of the age, thought Casanova the most interesting man he had ever met. He is a well of knowledge, but he quotes Homer and Horace ad nauseam. His wit and his sallies are like attic salt. He's sensitive and generous, but displease him in the slightest, and he's unpleasant, vindictive and detestable. He believes in nothing except what is most incredible, 
being superstitious about everything. He loves and lusts after everything. The Romance of Casanova, a novel by Richard Altington, describes the three-month affair Casanova entered into with a French woman he named Henriette, perhaps the deepest love he ever experienced, a woman who combined beauty, intelligence and culture. In, in his words, they who believe that a woman is incapable of making a man equally happy all the 24 hours of the, hours of the day have never known an Henriette. The joy which flooded my soul was far greater when I conversed with her during the day than when I held her in my arms at night. Having read a great deal and having natural taste, Henriette judged rightly of everything. She also judged Casanova astutely. Perhaps no woman so captivated Casanova as Henriette. Few women obtained so deep an understanding of him. She penetrated his outward shell early in their relationship, resisting the temptation to unite her life with his. She came to discern his volatile nature, his lack of social background and the precariousness of his finances. Casanova himself was aware of his volatile nature and that he would never be happy if he settled down to a life of domesticity. Casanova's ideal liaison and modus operandi had elements beyond sex, including complicated plots, heroes and villains, and gallant outcomes. In a pattern he often repeated, in Act One he would discover an attractive woman in trouble with a brutish or jealous lover. In Act Two he would ameliorate her troubles. In Act Three she would show her gratitude, he would seduce her, a short exciting affair would ensue. In Act Four, feeling a loss of ardour or boredom setting in, he would plead his unworthiness and arrange for her marriage or pairing with a worthy man, then exit the scene. In his memoirs, Casanova depicts over 120 such scenarios. And it is for his memoirs that Casanova is chiefly remembered today. They are a terrific read because Casanova was a literary artist, highly intelligent and presents his material like mini plays with a satisfying ending or outcome to the affair he is depicting. In their original publication the memoirs were divided into 12 volumes and the unabridged English translation runs to more than 3,500 pages. <coughs> Excuse me. Though his chronology is at times confusing and inaccurate and many of his tales exaggerated for artistic effect, much of his narrative and, and many details are corroborated by contemporary writings. He has a good ear for dialogue and writes at length about all classes of society. Casanova for the most part is candid about his faults, intentions and motivations and shares his successes and failures with good humour. The confession is largely devoid of repentance or remorse. He celebrates the senses with his readers, especially regarding music, food and women. As well as his sexual adventures with women and girls, he describes his duels and conflicts with scoundrels and officials, his entrapments and his escapes, especially his famous escape from the Leds of Venice where he was imprisoned for licentious behaviour, his schemes and plots, his anguish and his sighs of pleasure. Casanova's memoirs demonstrate convincingly his claim, I can say I have lived. Jacques Casanova died on the 4th of June 1798, aged 73. In this brief introduction, I could only hit some of the highlights, but if you'd like to learn more about Jacques Casanova's life and work, I refer you to Casanova by Ian Kelly. And, of course, to Casanova's memoirs. I own the six-volume complete and unabridged English translation by Arthur Machen, as displayed in the thumbnail. The novel by Richard Alderson, The Romance of Casanova, is also very enjoyable. But if you really want to get to know Casanova, then read his own words in his memoirs and then go on from there. Let me know in the comments below if after hearing about Casanova as a writer, you're not tempted to try reading his memoirs. If you are, I can confirm that all six volumes are available from Project Gutenberg. There is a link in the resources section of the show notes below. In this week's Sunday Morning Meetup, I will be discussing my May wrap-up and my rolling TBR for June. So that's all, folks. But I'll be back soon with another 
Fortune TDR.